another video from this channel. Today I'm going to talk about Agilan uh, HPLC UV detector and the problems that you may encounter during your HPLC analysis that relates to your detector. Agilan provides two different types of UV. One of them is DAD detector, the one that I have in front of me. Uh, and the second one is the variable wavelength detector or VWD. During the course of this video, I will talk about the difference, differences between these two. Uh, what I have done is that I have taken out the optical component of the detector from the module and what's left inside is just the electronics, motherboard, power supply and so on. Now this block that we see in front, uh, to the left of me uh, we have the lamps. There are two types of lamps with this detector the tungsten lab and the deuterium lab. Uh, the one in the middle, the section in the middle is uh, where the flow cell sits and I can open this and we'll show you the flow cell and it comes out and to, the, to, to my right is the, uh, the detector, uh, photovoltaic detector and the mirrors and all the op optical components. Now the problem that you see or face during your analysis that relates to detector mostly is your baseline. Uh, you may see a noisy baseline, you see drifting baseline, uh, erratic baseline, okay, up and down. Uh, you, you may see uh, that the chromatography is extremely poor or, or something that you cannot even recognize. or the other problem is that you will see the intensity of your peak uh, decrease significantly. So all these problems uh, could be related to different components of this detector. Uh, I'm going to start with the lamps. Uh, I would say that probably 90 to 90, 95% of detector related problems has to do with your lamp, 90 to 95 and more specifically has to do with your deuterium lamp. Uh, the deuterium lamp will not last forever and usually they will say it, will, it needs to be replaced every let's say 1000 hours of operation. And depending on how often you use your detector it probably will last for like one year. And these uh, detect, uh, deuterium lamps ha have a shelf life, meaning that if you buy them and stockpile them they will, uh, they will go bad. Uh, what is happening with these lamps? I'm going to actually open this up and that we have a better picture of what's going on. Uh, the, taking the lamp out is really simple. You just unscrew uh, these two screws here. And actually the replacement of the lamp is the same process. You just screw it and unscrew it. So these deuterium lamps has a quartz glass or some type of glass that it doesn't absorb uh, the UV uh, radiation. <clears throat> Inside the lamp we have the deuterium gas and uh, the lamp will create an arc inside and the, the arc, uh, electron, electric, electronic arc will make the deuterium to excite and when the deuterium uh, from the excited state comes to the ground state, it will uh, irradiate uh, UV radiation. Now, over time, the deuterium inside the lamp is diminished, either leaks out or whatever. And as the concentration of deuterium inside decreases, the intensity of the UV radiation also decreases. So as the radiation decreases, you will notice that probably you have a very a smaller peak intensity or your peak to noise ratio increases or you will see that maybe your baseline start to become noisier. And in all these cases, prob probably it's the time to replace the lamp. Now to make sure that your lamp needs to be replaced, there are certain uh, diagnostic methods in the chemistation or open lab that you could run 
And one of the one, one of the tests that is very useful is the lamp intensity test that looks at the UV radiation at uh, let's say 190 up to maybe 450 or 500, and uh, it will it will tell you it gives you a report uh, on the intensity and it will give you pass and fail. Uh, more often with the DAD type detector, you already have uh, you don't have a decent amount of radiation at. 190, 200 to 210 and your lamp has to be top notch in order to satisfy that intensity and as the lamp ages uh, there is a tendency to have lamp failing the lamp intensity test in those re region but it doesn't mean that uh, your uh, lamp is bad probably you still have a very good intensity at 250, 254, 270 and you may be able to let's say uh, let others to use this detector with this lamp that you have with the methods that uh, they require to have different uh, let's say lambda max in their method uh, quantitation wavelength and if you really have to use 210 maybe you want to switch to another equipment that has a newer lamp i mean this is the choice that you have uh, because it is failing the lamp intensity for your application your method doesn't mean that you have to replace it Again, it is a choice that you would make. Uh, now, putting this aside, the other lamp is a tungsten lamp. I can open it up and we can have a better look at it. And I have to say, uh, I've never remember ever to replace tungsten lamp. And the, probably there are two reasons. One of them is that in the pharmaceutical field, we don't use visible region too often for our uh, methods. And uh, this is one reason that we don't even notice like this lamp is bad or not. And probably another one is that these lamps uh, don't have intensity uh, problem like a deuterium lamp. They either emit, emit light or don't. If they don't, it means like they're, they're burned out. And Agilan makes these light bulbs very uh, robust. And I don't again recall, I don't remember ever that these burn out. It seems like they are going to work forever. So anyway, so there are two, uh, as I said, 95% of the problem that you may encounter has to do with the lamp, is specifically your deuterium lamp. I'm gonna put this in, let me put them back later on. Now, another 5%, I would say, it may not be a lamp-related issue. They may have to do with your flow cell, uh, the other 5%. So what will happen with the flow cell is that maybe your flow cell leak. And as it leaks, uh, it will make the uh, cell wet and then your mobile phase evaporates and you get all these spots. Now, how under what condition cells leak? Uh, one probability is that you put too much back pressure to your flow cell. And these flow cells will leak if you put pressure above 120 bars. And now uh, one will ask, like, how come a flow cell experiences 120 bars? Uh, one probability is that like someone will decide to wash the flush the system with the IPA or some very viscous solvent at a very high flow rate without having any column on. And if they do that, then probably the flow cell will experience high back pressure and then it will leak. And the leak would be because you have damaged the gasket and they need to be rebuilt. Uh, Agilent provides uh, flow cell kits. I do recall there are two types. One of them is just gasket. The other one is gasket plus the quartz window. So what you do is that you buy these kits, you just unscrew the uh, window from the top, you take it apart, and then you uh, follow the instruction. You just take these bad gaskets and you put the new ones like it pop stack them up and then close the flow cells so that should uh, solve the problem and uh, again uh, the rest of this detector are the motherboards and electronics they probably sometimes you may have problem with them but uh, not too often uh, thank you very much this is all i wanted to talk about the detector uh, if uh, how you can do a good practice to prolong the life of these lamps, probably don't leave them on forever, uh, turn them off, 
as you don't use them uh, probably you don't want to put too much pressure on your flow cell that it starts to leak and it's a very good practice not to run these um, uh, methods with the extremely high mobile phase concentration that ends up precipitating inside your system or flow cell or whatever uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you like this video i appreciate you push the like button uh, if i miss something and you want to Mm, like correct me or like share your experience with us please write a comment i will read it and i will definitely reply to you thank you very much and uh, i'm going to put this back inside the module and i put the music up for you uh, take care and have a good time